Good day. Here are the top stories of the Manila Times for November 25, 2020. The government will immunize 60 million Filipinos from the COVID-19, and it plans to raise $73.2 billion for this endeavor. According to Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr., the vaccine czar and chief implementer of the country's COVID-19 response, the Philippines is in negotiations with four pharmaceutical companies, Sinovac, AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson, and Pfizer. If talks will be successful, the country might be able to secure COVID-19 vaccines by the second quarter of 2021. The relations between China and the Philippines blossomed despite the pandemic and the maritime dispute in the South China or West Philippine Sea, according to Philippine Ambassador to China Jose Santiago Santa Romana. During the Manila Times virtual roundtable, he said China's pandemic response to the Philippines became the cornerstone of the bilateral relations between the two countries. The Supreme Court, sitting as Presidential Electoral Tribunal, withdrew the show cause order it issued against Solicitor General Jose Calida and the Manila Times reporter Jomar Canlas. Unimpeachable sources of the Times in the High Court said the High Court ruled to revise the draft decision of the UNN and recall the show cause order for indirect contempt against Calida and this reporter. The tribunal, led by Chief Justice Justado Peralta, wanted Associate Justice Marvick Mario Victor Leonen to concentrate on the election protests of former Senator Ferdinand Marcos Jr. against Vice President Maria Leonor Robredo. In other news, President Rodrigo Duterte has approved the release of an additional $1.5 billion to local government units or LGUs to support the rehabilitation and recovery following the devastation caused by Typhoon Ulysses with international name VAMCO. The president gave Budget Secretary Wendell Avisado the green light to release the funds to LGUs during a meeting in Davao City on Monday night. Avisado said the funds would be downloaded as soon as the chief executive signs the authorization. In business, government funds extended to state agencies for the COVID-19 pandemic response programs have jumped to $486.07 billion, according to the Department of Budget and Management, or DBM. Data from the Budget Department showed that of the amount released as of November 20, the bulk, or $217.41 billion, went to the Department of Social Welfare and Development. Other departments that received more than $1 billion were the Departments of Labor and Employment with $28.48 billion, Health with $73.23 billion, Finance $100.19 billion, Agriculture $27.69 billion, the Interior and Local Government $3.31 billion, National Defense $2.92 billion, Education $14.91 billion, Trade and Industry $1.30 billion, Public Works and Highways $5.56 billion, and Transportation $9.50 billion. On top of world news, the General Services Administration asserted on Monday, Tuesday in Manila, that President-elect Joe Biden is the apparent winner of the November 3 election, clearing the way for the start of the transition from President Donald Trump's administration and allowing Biden to coordinate with federal agencies on plans for taking over on January 20. Trump, who had refused to concede the election, said in a tweet that he is directing his team to cooperate on the transition but is vowing to keep up the fight. Administrator Emily Murphy made a determination after Trump's efforts to subvert the vote failed across battleground states, citing, quote, recent developments involving legal challenges and certifications of election results. In sports, the Cavaliers have found either a temporary replacement for Tristan Thompson or an assert to bring in other talent. Cleveland on Monday, Tuesday in Manila, announced that it had acquired center Javali McGee and a 2026 second-round draft pick from Los Angeles Lakers for forwards Alfonso McKinney and Jordan Bell. The teams agreed to the deal on Sunday but needed league approval before finalizing it. Also, the team has worked out an agreement with free agent guard Matthew De La Vidova, one of the Cavs' most popular players. Rigoberto Teglau is the featured columnist on the front page. Teglau writes colossal lies on the pandemic, which basically contradicts the paper's editorial the other day titled IATF Should Study the Science and Math of the Pandemic, saying the paper's claims was, quote, so patently wrong. In its editorial, the Times writes alarming lack of details in government vaccine plan. Read the full version of the Times opinion section or listen to the voice of the Times. 
For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print. Subscribe to its digital edition or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And keep up with the times.